Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with iRight Veteran 8888. All right, more shenanigans. I mean, holy crap, it never ends. Uh, this has to do with the uh, failed ATF raid uh, that got an Arkansas man killed sometime back here. Uh, we reported on it. Um, if you want to know the full story, check that video out. I'll put a link down in the description box below to bring you up to speed. Um, however, uh, right now, the Arkansas AG is definitely demanding answers, and there's some shenanigans about the body camera footage, so we're going to get into this. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our friends at CMMG for supporting our efforts here on YouTube. Uh, they are an awesome group of people. Definitely check them out. If you're looking for anything in the AR category, they are your go-to people. Made right here in the U.S. They got some awesome stuff like their bufferless descent line. So you've got um, four charging handles of folding stocks, nice compact setups, both in pistol and rifle configurations, various lengths. They've also got their Mark 47 now in the bufferless descent line. So you can have a mutant with a folding stock now. So you have 762 by 39 that feeds from AK Mag's from an AR platform with a folding stock, exceptional accuracy, great guns. They've also got some amazing 22 conversion kits. Check them out, uh, CMMG, and tell them that Eric sent you. All right, let's get into this. This is an article on Ammo Land from our friend Lee Williams, and we're going to get into this. All right, Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin has serious questions for ATF officials about their botched March 19th SWAT team raid, which killed Little Rock Airport Executive Director Brian Malinowski in his home. And if ATF has body camera footage of the fatal raid, Griffin wants to see that too. As someone who couldn't be a bigger law enforcement supporter, when our government acts in a particular way that raises questions, we have the obligation to say something. My understanding, having looked at the ATF rules, is that they generally require a body cam when there's a pre-planned raid, right? Why? Well, because information from a camera helps fill the vacuum of conspiracy and all this other stuff. So record it with a body cam that's required, and then there's policy that it shall be released as soon as possible, Griffin said during an interview with local media on Sunday. The Attorney General acknowledged that journalists, attorneys, and citizens have raised significant questions about the raid and the ATF's choice of tactics. This questions uh, that the ATF has yet to answer. Look, this is bizarre uh, that there's just been silence. I understand there's a state investigation going on with it, uh, but there's nothing about this footage that should stop it from being released, he said. The ATF has yet to comment officially on the March 19th raid. Uh, killing uh, other than to claim Malinowski fired first. But Malinowski's family recently said in a statement that the 53-year-old airport executive likely did not know he was trading gunfire with federal agents. It is far more likely he believed he was defending himself and his wife from armed home intruders. As yet, an unidentified ATF agent shot Malinowski in the head with a carbine at least once. Malinowski lingered for two days before dying of his wounds. A story published last week chronicled a host of less lethal tactics ATF could have used during the raid, any of which would have spared Malinowski's life. The Arkansas State Police Criminal Investigation Division is investigating Malinowski's killing. Once their investigation is complete, state prosecutors, not federal, will determine whether any ATF agent should face criminal charges. This is not the first time the ATF's use of excessive force has drawn the ire of state law enforcement officials. Last year, after an ATF SWAT team raided one of his constituent, uh, constituents, Oklahoma State Representative Justin J.J. Humphrey demanded a grand jury and presented a probable cause affidavit to the Oklahoma Attorney General, which outlined the crimes and civil rights violations Humphrey believed ATF agents committed when they sent a 12-man SWAT team to his Tuscahoma, uh, Oklahoma home of Russell Fincher, a federal firearms licensee who also teaches high school and serves as a Baptist pastor. Wow. Griffin was sworn in uh, in an attorney general, uh, I'm sorry, Griffin was sworn in as uh, Arkansas Attorney General on January 10th, 2023, after serving as Lieutenant Governor and in Congress. He's a colonel in the Army Reserve, and he serves in the Judge Advocate General's Corps. 
While in Congress, Griffin sponsored pro-gun legislation and uh, was endorsed by pro-gun groups. During Sunday's interview with local media, he announced he was joined a lawsuit led by other Republican attorney general uh, who are suing the Biden-Harris administration over their new law to expand uh, background check requirements for private gun sales. I just reported on this, but let's see what he has to say about it. I think it's a bad idea in this particular case, the way they're doing it, Griffin said. This is not within the Biden administration's unilateral power to act. We've seen it with student loans. We've seen it with gun laws. We've seen it with all these different environmental wrecks uh, when they don't get what they want through Congress, which I understand is not a friendly Congress to a lot of their views. Neither Griffin nor Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders responded to calls or emails seeking their comments for the story. Good reporting, Lee. All right. And look, this just goes to show you know dang well that those body cameras were on. You know they have the body camera footage. You know the body camera footage tells the whole story. If you're in the right, then release the body camera footage and exonerate yourselves if you're in the right. They also taped over the ring camera that was on Malinowski's front door. Now, there's footage of that. There's footage showing them come up and tape the the doorbell camera. Okay, so operationally, I'm probably going to draw some flack here, but look, I'm just I'm just telling you what their tactics are. Operationally, that was the correct thing to do because, you know, obviously if you don't want to give a potential enemy a jump on how many men are with you, what they're doing, what how they're operating, what the equipment they So from an operational, tactical standpoint, I can understand why they covered the ring camera because that's probably what just, that's straight out of the book. They're just doing what's in the freaking book, okay? So now, but it does raise a question, do they have something to hide, right? So, all right, fine. The operational security of the of the entry team and their need to cover the, 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 the potential criminal's ring camera, was that merited? One could argue, they would make the argument that that was just a straight out of the book response and that's what anybody would do in any situation regardless of the circumstance. However, their cameras weren't covered and they can say they malfunctioned all day long. I guarantee you that footage is not flattering and it probably tells a different story. You know, it might have, it might tell a story of, of a dazed and confused Malinowski who, who is just trying to identify who the heck is in his house or who knows what exchange occurred before the gunfight broke out that ended in his death or at least mortal wounding, which he died a few days later. So a very telling situation, you know, if the ATF wants to have such strict standards for what you and I should have to do when it comes to our second amendment rights, and especially when those standards are going to be applied through some, you know, malicious executive fiat that doesn't even go through Congress and doesn't even go through the sanctity of your own uh, elected representatives, well, then they need to at least have the standards to say, all right, we're going to wear body cameras on all these raids. We're going to show exactly what happened, and we're going to have full transparency as to what exactly happened on each and every individual raid. I think that that is the least they can do if they're at least not going to freaking go through the proper channels to do their job in a way that goes through Congress like it's supposed to, right? They, they're just making up rules as they go, and Congress is letting them do it, and that's the issue. That's the glaring question at hand. Right now, all this stuff is going through the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's having to look at the frame and receiver rule. They're having to look at the bump stock case. you got Michael Cargill is who's suing their socks off and, <laughs> quite frankly, winning. Okay, he's doing well. That's in the Supreme Court right now. Um, you know, right now they're, they're trying to change the definition of a gun dealer. That's going to wind up probably in the Supreme Court. So there are a lot of very important Second Amendment Supreme Court cases uh, that are coming down the pipeline. And they're either going to put a stopper and, and a complete death to Chevron deference and the abuse of those rulemaking uh, powers that they have or privileges or whatever you want to call it. Or it's going to completely justify and sanctify everything they're doing and they're going to go full Monty and just pass a full gambit of random laws or rules or whatever they want to call them or edicts, I mean, or death warrants or whatever they want to call it because that's how they're going to do it. This is nothing more than a death warrant, you know, and and people are going to have that opinion until they prove otherwise. So if they have the body camera footage, let's see the body camera footage, y'all. What do you got to hide? 
You guys are in the right. You know, y'all are the holy knights in shining armor catching this evil guy selling a few guns on the on the side at a gun show to recover a little extra money and take his family on vacation or something. You know what I mean? This ain't just some schlub, right? This is a guy who's, you know, in his 50s, good career, probably makes good money at his job. He ain't doing this because he needs freaking money necessarily. He's just selling off a few extra guns, make a little extra money, maybe go on a vacation or something or trade up and buy some other stuff. It doesn't even matter what the guy was doing it for. He could be doing it for profit, and it doesn't matter. It's none of anybody's business what somebody does with their firearms that they own that are in their possession and that are their property, right? So this is, this is going to go south before it gets better. This is not the first time you're going to see this. Expect to see more of these raids because they're coming. They're, they're going to full, go full Monty because, you know, they want to get those big budgets. They want to make sure that, you know, Congress gives them plenty of money which the ATF did just take a hit uh, on there. Now, they say, oh, we cut funding the ATF. It wasn't a lot of money. Like, yeah, they cut the funding just to shut people like me up, but at the end of the day, it it was not even enough to even affect anything operationally those people were doing by by not even a a tiniest margin. But when it comes to getting that money, they're always going to have to try to justify the reason for existing. And that's what this kind of stuff comes down to. Every now and then, the ATF has to do something crazy just so... They can show Congress, see, see, we're needed. Here's why. So anyway, look, you got to keep your eyes on this kind of stuff because you can't allow just one or two things to slip through the cracks because then what happens is that that liquid gets into the crack and expands and that crack gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know it, it's a canyon and you're stuck. One person's on the other side. You're on there yelling. You can't do nothing. So, you know, you can't allow these types of things to stand. We, we have to definitely make sure we're holding our elected representatives' feet to the fire and letting them know, hey, we're going to vote your butts out if you don't have a hardline stance on the Second Amendment. Hey, call them. Why are you not holding the ATF accountable for their malfeasance? You know, they, they are obviously not playing by the rules. And why are you allowing it to happen? You're Congress. You're supposed to have congressional oversight, right? You know, you guys are supposed to, you know, be in charge. You're, you're supposed to, you guys make the laws, not these people. You're letting them run the ship. And that's not how this is supposed to work. I have faith that the Supreme Court will see our way on this, but don't rest on those laurels. You know, make sure you're staying on top of this. It's part of your civic duty to make sure you understand how your government works, right? All of the processes there thereof. And who your elected representatives are, what they do, what their jobs are. I mean, this is all part of civic duty. You can't put your head in the sand and assume that the people you send to Washington are going to fight for something that you view as so important, like your Second Amendment rights. And especially when there's so many weak-kneed Republicans that don't even care about the Second Amendment. That's one of the last things they would care about. In fact, they would even vote with anti-gunners on certain pieces of legislation Um uh, you know, not even thinking that their constituents even care about the Second Amendment. They view the Second Amendment as a bargaining chip that they can just throw around and do whatever they want to with. And that has to stop. We have to put a stop to it. We cannot allow these people to continue to trample all over us because eventually there's no, not going to be anything left. There's just going to be some bloody footprints with some goo in them. And they're like, what was that? Well, that's, that used to be the people that had Second Amendment rights. Not anymore. They're just gone. That's what they want. They want people that own guns to go by the wayside. And they want to treat people that own guns like criminals. And they want to come up with every reason they can to say, well, someone's a gun owner. They're just automatically assumed to be a criminal. And that's a dangerous thing that we should never, ever, ever support in a million years. We have the Second Amendment. It is codified in our Constitution. It is the most direct constitutional language in the entire document. It says exactly what it means. Shall not be infringed. It says... Shall not be infringed. It's the most direct constitutional language. It tells the government what they can and can't do. It tells them, you shall not do this. You shall not pass. But yet, here they go. Keep passing. And we can't allow them to do it anymore. This stuff has to stop because these sorts of things can't happen anymore. Whether it's Brianna Taylor or whether it's this guy, it doesn't matter who the heck it is. We can't allow these types of situations to occur because, you know what, if we let them... If we let them divide us, all they're going to do is divide and conquer. You know, you you can't say, well, it didn't happen in my camp, so I'm okay with it because it wasn't my camp. It was someone that maybe I disagree with their lifestyle choices, but, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's okay if if they do it to them. Nah, 
No, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. You can't allow that to happen. Uh, a, a crime against one is a crime against all. And we have to start treating it that way. We can't allow these people to divide us because then they're going to be way easier to conquer us. So hope you all have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share this. It, it kind of got me fired up because it's like, man, it just, you know dang well they have that body camera footage. Come on, ATF, release the body camera footage. What's, what's wrong? You scared it, you, that you're not in the right? What, what's wrong? Did you not do something right? Well, let's see. If if you're in the right, exonerate yourself. Show the footage. What do you got to lose? I'm just saying. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.